Remember when we moved some notes around in our MIDI file? Well, what if I told you we could do the same thing with our audio files too? Because I made a mistake on the bass at the start of the second chorus. And let's zoom in on that. Just using the scroll wheel. Okay, it's late. I can see that by looking at the vertical lines here because this is the beginning of the chorus and my note is actually almost a quarter note late. These vertical lines represent quarter notes in this case. So let's just uh, take a listen. I'm going to start at the bar before. We come and go ah. So definitely late. Now let's solo that and hear it just with the click. So I'm going to turn the metronome on. And soloing basically just plays this track only and mutes all the other tracks. And you can see that, by the way, it, it grayed everything out here. Let's take a listen again. Oh yeah, that's very, very late. This note should actually start right here. Now we're going to have to do some work on the bass track itself, so I'm actually going to make it a bit bigger. I'm going to do that by coming over to the track panel, and when I see this double arrow here, I'm just going to pull down and it will make that track taller. That's much, much easier to look at now. So we see here, this is what we want it to look like. This was perfectly in time. This is very late. So how do we move just this one note and nothing else? Well, we need to separate it from the rest of the media item using the split command. Using the shortcut S will split the selected item at the playhead. So it's important that we have the item selected, which is just clicking on it and hitting the S key. And I'm actually going to do this right at the bar where I want this to start. So you can see that now just this area is selected. And again, I'm going to go to the end of that and hit S. So now we have this note separate from the rest of the audio. And we can move it around without messing up the rest of the track. There are a couple of mouse modifiers that will help us make the most of this. When moving things around, I want to temporarily turn off our snap to grid feature, so I hold the shift while I'm dragging. And it works like a clutch to disengage the grid snapping when it's pressed, and then re-engages when it's released. The second mouse modifier is Alt. And holding Alt keeps the edit points the same, but slides the audio behind it. Think about it like a window between the two edit points and I get to choose what part of the audio I see. I will do that one first here. So I'm gonna hold Alt, and you see it turns to a little double arrow there, and I can pull this forward or push it back. The other option, as I said, was using Shift, which will move the entire item back and forth, and if I release Shift, it'll snap to the grid. All right, let's correct the beginning of this note. And this is, I'm gonna use the Alt function to slide this up. So I'm going to hold Alt and pull this right up to the beginning of the bar. In fact, whoop, I actually went a little too far. I'm going to move my cursor, my playhead right to the beginning of this bar, and I'm going to zoom in using the scroll wheel. And this is where it gets a little bit hard to look at. But what I'm going to do now is pull this back and I can see, see here how this is just a, a straight line. And then this is the beginning of the note right here. And I want that to be right at the bar line. So again, I'm holding Alt while I'm moving that. So let me zoom out. Looks better. Uh, the end here is uh, strange. It's, uh, it's too short. I think I'm going to have to shorten this. So this is where I'm going to hold Shift and shorten this like that. Now, there are a lot of nuances here with the cursor, and everything is contextual. So sometimes you'll see when I've got my cursor at the end of the item, I get this cursor shape, and this tells me that I can extend or shorten the item. So I don't have shift pressed right now, so this will just snap to grid. If I hold shift, I can move to any point between the grid points. Let's go back to the beginning of the note. And I'm going to zoom in again and actually may have noticed my cursor turned into what's sort of a, a double-ended editor here. And with this, I'm going to hold shift because I'm zoomed in pretty closely. But this allows me to 
change the edit point so I can either pull it this way or that way and the the media items on either side don't move just the edit point itself but I'm going to keep that right on the bar line here the next thing we need to do is make sure that our auto crossfade is enabled and that is this button right here in the main toolbar and it's lit up so I know I know it's on it should be on by default but it's always good to double check so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to crossfade these two audio items I'm going to hold shift again to release the grid and I'm going to drag this over top of the other one and just by dragging over top it's going to create a crossfade for us now I'm going to zoom out so we can see this a little bit more in context and actually let's take a listen because we've uh, we've done this and we haven't really listened yet so let's double check oh yeah that starts really well but the notes too short now we can stretch the item to fit the space so going over to this edge here and holding the alt key turns us into a little grabby hand. And that's basically telling us that it's going to allow us to stretch or shorten the audio without changing the pitch. So let's do it. Okay, so that's snapped to the end, but that's all right. Let's just take a listen because now this audio fills the space. Okay, that's better. But it actually seems like these notes just after are a little bit late. Just these two. I can actually see it on the grid here. If I just put my cursor here and zoom in, I can see that that's a little bit late. This next one, maybe you could say it's late, but it seems pretty on time to me. So how am I going to correct these two? Because I don't just have to correct one note at a time, but I do need to separate them from the rest of the track. Now they're already separated on this side. So on this side, I need to make sure the item is selected, hit S, select this item now. And again, I'm gonna use the Alt drag to move these just a little bit forward. There we go. And again, I'm gonna click there, zoom in. Now. Reaper automatically puts these little fade-ins and fade-outs to keep there from being any pops or clicks, but it sounds more natural when you crossfade. So again, I'm going to make sure I've got my cursor looking like the end of an audio item and the little double arrow. I'm going to hold shift to release the grid and make a crossfade and zoom out. Again, just using the scroll wheel, and I'm going to do the same thing at the end here. And in fact, yeah, that's what I thought. I can see that because I move this forward, that this part here is the same as this here. So I want to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to crossfade these. And the crossfade actually in behind here shows us what the waveform would look like. So, so I get these crosshairs here. Again, holding shift, I can slide this a little bit forward. And boom, we've got total silence here. Again, I can move this fade back or forwards, but the idea is to get it so that there are no little artifacts showing up inside the fade or just on either side of it. And when I mean artifacts, I'm talking about extra little bits of waveform. So let's zoom out. And let's unsolo this, turn off the click track, and take a listen to this transition. I'm going to go back a little bit earlier. We're going to listen through to what we just edited. We come and go in the wink of an eye. We are no longer safe. There we go. And now the bass is totally in time there. And I mean, you could go through and cut each and every bass note to make sure they're perfect. That's up to you to decide whether or not that's important. 
some styles of music if you were doing dance music or something like that you might want to make sure that it everything is perfectly on the beat especially if you're incorporating a lot of electronic elements but if you're doing something more acoustic based you can often get away with letting it be a little more human but that is how you take a note and align it to the grid